All right, so today's topic is titrations. Last time we talked about acid-base neutralization reactions, right? Today we're talking about titrations. And so in intro chem, which is this class, obviously, we are only worrying about strong acid with a strong base. The reason I make a point of mentioning that is because in general chemistry, um, general chemistry two, we talk about weak acids and weak bases, but that's not something you worry about in intro chem. Okay, so just throwing that out there because this video is being recorded. Um, you're not gonna have to worry about weak acids. And your textbook does talk about weak acids and you can just disregard that because we're in intro chem. We're not gonna do weak acids in intro chem. All right, so titration. This is a method to determine the concentration, the molar concentration of an acid or a base. Okay, so that's the purpose. We're using a titration to figure out what's the concentration of an unknown acid, or you can do it for an unknown base. You can go either direction. Just on my camera for the 900th time. Okay, so let's talk about the steps in a titration. Now titration calculations are not all that bad. Titration sounds like a scary word, but it's really not that bad. So you're going to first multiply molarity times volume in liters. Make sure it's in liters of the known. Okay, molarity times volume in liters. And again, I say of the known because we could be using a base to figure out an acid or we can be figure out an acid to figure out a base, okay? Then you're going to, step two is the stoichiometry, stoichiometry step. Multiply by the mole ratio, just like in stoichiometry, from the balanced equation. So this is just like the stoichiometry, step two. Everybody remembers step two of stoichiometry, right? We multiply by the mole ratio. It's exactly the same in titration, okay? Because titration is essentially stoichiometry. And then step three, the easy step, there's no grams to moles. You don't deal with molar mass or anything like that. In step three, take number of moles and divide by volume in liters, All right? Because molarity is equal to moles over liters. You get moles from step two and liters is given in the problem. This would have to be given. And this we calculate in step two. So I'd have to give you the volume in liters from the, or I'd probably give it to you in milliliters. You would then convert it to liters, and then that would use to be calculating molarity. So it's not that bad. Again, if you understand stoichiometry, you'll understand this. And this is even easier in stoichiometry because you don't have to deal with molar masses, right? Stoichiometry, you have to convert grams to moles, mole ratio, moles back to grams. No molar masses to deal with here. Woo-hoo! Straightforward. So let's do some examples. Then I'll give you some examples, some to try. And if you understand one of them, you're probably going to understand all of them. So let's do a calculation example. Uh, a 150 milliliter sample of hydrochloric acid is 
is titrated with 128.6 milliliters of 0 0.50 molar sodium hydroxide. What's the molarity of the acid? I'll give you a second to jot that down if you want to have any notes before I go over how to do it so that you're not trying to write while I'm talking. We ready to go over this one? So the first thing we need is a balanced chemical equation. So let's review last week. What's the formula for hydrochloric acid? HCl. HCl, right. The hydro prefix tells me that it's hydrogen ion, which actually doesn't exist, and chloride ion, so that makes HCl. That's AQ. And sodium hydroxide, there's nothing special about how we write that formula. What's it? Sodium hydroxide is just NaOH. These are both aqueous. What do we produce when we add an acid to a base? This water. is yep. Water, because this is a double displacement reaction, right? The OH and the H. And then what's our other product? Na. That's salt. Yeah, that's the salt. NaCl. Is this balanced? Yes, this one's already balanced, so lucky us. Now, I recommend writing what you know and what you're looking for underneath the uh, substances in your reaction, so that way you don't plug something in in the wrong place. This is a 150 milliliter sample, and we want to know what its molarity is. Here, we know that it is 120. 8.6 mils and it's 0 0.50 molar. So list what you know and what you're looking for. So step one, we're going to multiply the molarity times the volume in liters of the known. Well we can't do anything here with HCl right because it's the unknown. Right? So we're going to use the known. So how do I convert milliliters to liters? Divide by a thousand, right? Because there are a thousand milliliters in a liter. So what is that in liters? Just move the decimal three to the left, right? One, two, three. So 0 0.1286 liters times the molarity, 0 0.50 moles per liter. All right, liters cancels, that gives me units of moles. So we're just gonna multiply the molarity times the volume. So 0.1286 times 0.5. That gives me 0.0643 moles. And that's moles of any OH, right? Right, do we agree on how we did step one? Molarity times volume of the known. Now we're going to multiply by the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. The mole ratio is 1 to 1. Do you still need to show this step even though the number doesn't change? Yes, because I want to know that you know how to get from this unit to this unit. Okay, so even though my number isn't changing, I want to make sure that you know what you're doing. And the way that you can show me that you know what you're doing is by showing me that conversion factor. So we take our number, 0 0.0643 moles Na. OH. For every one mole of sodium hydroxide that I use, that requires one mole of hydrochloric acid. So one mole NaOH for every one mole of HCl. So my number doesn't change, only my units. So 0 0.0643 moles of HCl. Now I know moles. And I know volume. Do I have everything I need for molarity? Yeah, molarity is just moles over liters. 
So step three, molarity is equal to moles over liters. So take my number, 0 0.0643 moles. And don't forget to convert this to liters, right? Divided by 0 0.1500, right? Because that zero is significant liters. So divided by 0.15. Now I'm going to keep, that's got four sig figs, that's got four sig figs, that's got two sig figs. So how many can I keep? Two. So my calculator spits out 0 0.42. Eight, six, blah, 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 blah. But I have to round that to two sig figs, so it'll be 0 0.43, and my units will be moles per liter, or you can just write capital M. Is that a reasonable molarity given the molarity of the base that was used? Yes, it is. That's a reasonable molarity. If I came up with 27 molar, that would probably not be a reasonable molarity, right? So you can always kind of look at your molarity that you were working with as a frame of reference, right? You don't expect it to be exactly the same, but you would expect it to be in the same ballpark. You ready to try one for yourself? This stuff's easy, right? It's not bad. I feel like if you can do regular stoichiometry with all the grams and stuff, then this is the day for you. All right, so let's do, I'm gonna give you one to try. A 250 milliliter sample of lithium hydroxide. It's titrated with 217.4 milliliters of 0 0.65 molar uh, sulfuric acid. What's the molarity of lithium hydroxide? I'll pause the video and let you try this one. Okay, so the first thing we need is a balanced equation. So what's the formula for lithium hydroxide? LiOH. And what's the formula for sulfuric acid? H2SO4. What are we going to produce? H2O, which is a liquid. And what else? Li2SO4. Is this balanced? No. What do we need? Mm -hmm. And where else? Right. We have to double check our equation to make sure it's balanced before we do any stoichiometry because otherwise step two won't work. So the sample here is 250 mils. We don't know its molarity, that's what we're solving for. And it's titrated with 217.4 mils and its molarity is 0 0.65 molar. Okay. So let's go through our steps. This time we're solving for the base, right? In the last example we saw for the acid, this time we're solving for the base. So you can go either direction. So step one, molarity times volume of the known. So molarity is 0.65. What's this volume in liters? Just move the decimal three to the left. Right, so that would be 0 0.2174 liters times 0 0.65 moles per liter. So 
0.74 times 0.65 gives me 0.1413. Let's just carry out extra digits, moles. And this is moles of H2SO4. Now let's multiply by the mole ratio. Is this mole ratio one to one? No, it's not, right? So if we hadn't balanced this, we would definitely have a problem with our calculation here. So 0 0.1413 moles H2SO4. For every one mole of sulfuric acid I use, I require two moles of LiOH. So multiply by two, I get 0 0.2826 moles LiOH. Now do I have everything I need to solve for molarity? Yep, I do. Because molarity, molarity is moles over liters. Moles I just got in the previous step, so 0 0.2826 moles and volume was given in the problem so that would be 0 0.2500 liters so divided by 0 0.2500 and then my calculator spits out 1.13048 how many sig figs can I keep just two so that's 1.1 molar is that still a reasonable answer? <clears throat> yes, because you used less of this than this, right? So you're not gonna have exactly the same molarity. If you had come up with 18 molar, that would not be a reasonable answer. Any questions on how we did this one? All right, let me give you another one to try just to make sure we're feeling good at this. Okay, let's do this one. A 25.0 mil sample of nitric acid. It's titrated. Pause the recording and give you a chance to try this one. Okay, so nitric acid has the formula, what? HNO3. And potassium hydroxide is what? KOH. We're producing water and what? KNO3. Is this balanced? Yes, it is. All right, so this is a 25 milliliter sample. We don't know its molarity. It's being titrated with a 33.2 milliliter sample and it's 1.55 molar. All right, so first step is molarity times volume in liters. So what's this volume in liters? 33 milliliters is how many liters? 0 0.0332 liters. It's 1.55 moles per liter. So 0 0.0332 times 1.55. So that's 0 0.05146 
moles, and this is moles of potassium hydroxide. Now let's multiply by the mole ratio. So it's one to one, right? But I still want to see the step to show me that you know what you're doing. 0.05146 moles KOH. For every one mole KOH I consume, I also consume one mole of HNO3. So my number doesn't change, only my units. So that's 0 0.05146 moles HNO3. And now I have everything I need for molarity calculation, right? Molarity is just moles over liters. So moles was calculated up here, 0 0.05146 moles. And volume was given in the problem. What is that volume in liters? Right. 0 0.0250. So divided by 0 0.025. My calculator spits out 2.0584. And I can keep how many sig figs? Three. So that would be 2.06 moles per liter. Is that a reasonable molarity given the molarity of the base? Yeah, it's still reasonable. Okay, questions on this one. Questions on this one. How do we feel about this? Feel pretty good about it? All right, we're gonna do some reviewing now, so I'm gonna stop the recording.